Possiamo iniziare se siete tutti d'accordo. If you all agree, we can, we can start. So, very good. And uh, I am very happy to welcome you all to our Friday meeting as part of the webinar series on nonlinear differential problems. Today, I am really proud to introduce the distinguished lecture delivered by Professor Alessandro Fonda from the University of Trieste. Professor Fonda is an international expert mathematician, author of several well appreciated articles in the field of nonlinear analysis and ordinary differential equations. He has a large seminar activity and numerous international institutions, as well as he has been invited to various international mathematical conferences. Professor Fonda was awarded for his research activity. Among the other, in 2017, he received the prize Adolf Wittrems, awarded by the Académie Royale de Belgique for the originality and the meaningfulness of the scientific progress achieved by his research. He was the principal investigator of several national research projects, and together with Professor Fabio Zanolin and, pa and Professor Pierpaolo Mari, he is a leader of DEC1, an Italian group of talented and very active mathematicians. Today, Professor Fonda will speak about lower and upper solutions for systems. So please, Alessandro, if you wish to share the, your file, we can now start. I, now I share the screen. Okay, can you see it? Yes. Perfectly. So, First of all, I, I would like to thank the organizers for this uh, invitation. So thank, thank you very much, Gabriele, Pasquale, Giuseppina, Roberto, and Salvatore. And uh, thank you for this uh, very nice uh, webinar series. Uh, very nice till now, at least. So <laughs> we'll see now. Uh, as you said, Roberto, uh, you may see also in this page the symbol of this uh, big one, which is a a group we created here in uh, Friuli Venezia Giulia. It means uh, a differential equations group uh, of Northeast. And so um, if you are interested and curious, you can see the web page, the web page of this group where we, we have our activities. We, we present uh, diff different webinars also, and uh, you may miss it. Well, so, um, First of all, I, I will start with some preliminaries about uh, lower and upper solutions. And uh, uh, let us see the pioneers uh, in this subject. Uh, so the first I would like to mention is uh, Giuseppe Teano. Uh, he introduced lower and upper solutions to study the Cauchy problem um, for a um, first order differential equation in R, so in one dimension. This is the famous theorem he has for local uh, existence of the solution of the Cauchy problem. Um, well, it, it must say, be said that this paper has been criticized because it, it, it had some inaccuracies, but uh, recently in uh, the Bolletino of the Unione Matematica Italiana, in a paper by De Greco and uh, Mazzucchi, uh, the paper was revised, and uh, this is the conclusion of the authors. They say, we judge Peano's paper neither are rigorous nor incorrect. Then uh, later, Peano published the uh, paper on the local existence. Oh, uh, get some, uh, there's some microphone maybe to be turned off. OK, uh, later on, I, as, uh, as I was saying, Peano published a generalization of this theorem in, uh, higher dimension, in any dimension of the local existence of the solutions for the Cauchy problems. So other uh, to be mentioned are uh, uh, Picard in 1893. And uh, so you see this uh, paper was uh, the start for second order uh, equations. Then uh, Scorza Dragoni, he made some contributions in uh, the 30s. Um, Nagumo, 
in uh, always uh, in the 30s, as you can see, 1937, and, and then other papers in, uh, in these years. And, and then let, let me also mention uh, Knobloch in uh, 63, uh, where he first proved uh, an existence uh, result by lower and upper solutions for the periodic problem. Um, as you see, uh, an interesting uh, thing for me is that all these papers I'm, I'm, all these papers I mentioned are not in English. <laughs> they are either in Italian or in uh, French or in German. Uh, let me mention this result by Knobloch. So we consider a second order uh, t-periodic equation. Uh, by this, I mean that uh, G is t-periodic in the first variable in T, okay? Um, and uh, we assume that uh, there exist two functions, alpha and beta, t-periodic functions, which are ordered in this way, alpha is less and or equal than beta, and uh, they satisfy the inequalities as you can see here. Uh, moreover, we uh, need an, an extra condition in this case, which is the, the one I wrote here, and which is known as the Nagumo condition. And this is necessary to control the dependence on the, of the function G on the derivative on, on X prime. So under these assumptions, and Knobloch proved in 63 that there, there exists a t-periodic solution of the problem. And uh, this solution is uh, in between uh, alpha and beta. So uh, since uh, Hans Knobloch has left us almost two years ago, I, I would like to leave uh, now um, to ask uh, to Professor Jean Mawen if he wants to say some words about him. So please, uh, Jean. Uh, okay. Well, Professor Knobloch, uh, I had the privilege, in fact, to know him since uh, 1970, so it's already a while. And uh, I knew his work, of course, as it is often the case before knowing him personally. Uh, the reason was that uh, uh, in his long career, he has spent in 60, between 61 and 63, two academic years in the University of Michigan where uh, Lamberto Cesari was. And uh, this is maybe where he was really contaminated with ordinary differential equations because uh, his earlier work was in a completely uh, different domain. It was, uh, his thesis was in Galois algebras under the direction of the famous algebraist Hasse in Germany, Humboldt University in Berlin. And then he had a number of uh, uh, position without tenure in uh, various uh, German universities. Life was not easy in this period in Germany. And uh, so he went to, to Michigan for two years. And when he came back, he found a position in Denmark for a few years. And uh, finally, a position, a permanent position in Berlin at the Tech Technische Universität. And in 1970, he got his position in Würzburg, where he spent uh, essentially the, the rest of his long life. As you can see, he, he died, he was 92. And uh, uh, when he was visiting Michigan, he wrote several papers, including the one that uh, uh, Alessandro is mentioning. And uh, the method to prove this result was the Cesari method, which essentially reduced the problem of periodic solution to a finite dimensional, but with a large number of 
unknown finite dimensional problems. And uh, so my thesis, my PhD thesis was based also on Cesare's method. And so I immediately saw his paper, read his paper, and indeed, as was observed by Alessandro, they were written in German, at least, at least this, this one, and, and some other ones too. And in fact, I learned German to, by myself to be able to read his paper. So now because of him, uh, I can still not read uh, German philosophers, but at least I can order a meal in Germany without problems. So I, I learned German and this is one of the things uh, Professor Knobloch uh, led me to learn. And of course, when I wrote my thesis, I sent him the thesis and the, the result, he was a very kind man, was an invitation to an Oberwolfach meeting on gewöhnliche differential Gleichungen, ordinary differential equation. And it was in 1970, and it was followed by many other ones, because in fact, you see he liked periodicity, but the, the ODE meeting in Oberwolfach became periodic. The yeah. first one has started in 68, and then every second year, there was another one, and uh, I have attended all of them. It lasted until, I think, 1990, 1991, uh, or maybe later, yeah. And uh, I became even a co-organizer. Those meetings were uh, really had a very great influence for the evolution of ordinary differential equations. And uh, uh, Professor Knobloch there not only teach me and other ones uh, ordinary differential equation or possibly control theory, which was his other field of, of expertise, but he also learned us all we needed to know about the German white wine. So uh, he also organized in uh, Wurzburg in 1982, uh, one of the Equadif conference, uh, which are part of a series, the one which followed indeed the, the Equadif organized in Firenze. So he was a real kind, a little shy man, he was a great hiker also, he liked, he liked to hike. And uh, he had always really very nice contacts. Uh, if you read his papers, most of them are in English, except the, the one of the beginning of his, of his career. So they are more easy to read if you don't read German. You will see that he is an extremely sharp and elegant mathematician. You know, it's, it's, it's difficult, impossible to find something vague in his paper. He's always extremely uh, sharp. But for human relation, he was extremely smooth, extremely friendly. And uh, it was always uh, uh, happiness you know, to, to meet to meet him either in Oberwolfach or in Würzburg or in other parts of the world. So he has been most important for ordinary differential equations in Germany. I must say then since he is retired, there is almost no ordinary differential equation anymore in Germany. <laughs> and it's a pity because uh, I, I think that the field really deserves uh, more consideration. He was one of the, those exceptions of people working in ordinary differential equations and who did not move to partial differential equations. So this has to be mentioned. So all this show that uh, he was a really uh, exceptional person and uh, uh, he wrote his last book, his last book was uh, on control theory and he has written several books on control theory. Uh, in uh, 
2015, so he was not far from 90 years old when he wrote this book. And maybe you don't know that he wrote a, an excellent book on ordinary differential equations. You know, this is the book, Gervinische Differential Equation, which has only one defect. It is not to have been translated in another language because I think he really would deserve to be translated in another language. So I don't want to uh, use all the time that Alessandro has to give his lecture. So I thank him to have asked me, uh, uh, to have given me this opportunity to see, uh, say a few words of a man who he was very important in my life. He was among a few people who really can't. And uh, uh, I think I'm very, very happy to make him a little better known to the mathematical community. So, so. Um. Alessandro, abbiamo perso la condivisione dello schermo. Sì, adesso un attimo che cerco di... Prego, sì, fai con calma. È successo... Se riesci a condividere nuovamente. Ok, perfetto. Ok, can you see? Yes. Yeah. So now, um, Uh, as, I, as I said before, alpha and beta have to be ordered in the sense that alpha, the lower solution alpha, has to be less or equal than the upper solution beta. And indeed, uh, this is the case we, we call well-ordered case. And uh, so it, this is really something that uh, uh, is necessary in some sense because, uh, for example, a simple equation like the one I show now, uh, has no two pi periodic solution. You have here a two pi periodicity in T, and uh, it is well known that this equation has no two pi periodic solutions because we are in resonance, at resonance. And nevertheless, you can find a constant lower solution and a constant upper solution, but uh, alpha is one, beta is minus one, and so we don't have the well-ordered situation. So you see, there could be upper and lower solutions, but uh, if they are not well ordered, then you can miss the existence of a periodic solution. Then uh, let me say a few words about the regularity of alpha and beta. Well, I asked the, these functions to be C2, but uh, indeed uh, there could be some angular points. Alpha uh, could have some angle, angles of V type, V type, say, so the derivative goes down and then up. And at the same time, beta could have these kind of uh, angular points like capital lambda, say. And uh, this is why usually the request on these functions is that uh, the derivative at the end points is, uh, has these inequalities. Recall that uh, these are t-periodic uh, functions. So the, the upper and lower solutions could uh, be not smooth, not necessarily smooth, at least at some points. Then uh, besides uh, the periodic problem, you could uh, consider deep, many different other problems like the Dirichlet problem, Neumann problem, or Sturm-Liouville, for example, which is mixed of the two. Also the, the boundedness problem. So this is the uh, search for solutions which remain bounded on the whole real axis. Also, this is a problem to 
can which can be uh, uh, faced with the upper and lower solutions and in, clearly one has to ask for these cases the the, the right boundary of conditions on alpha and beta too uh, let's see for example for the Dirichlet problem well alpha and beta will have to satisfy the inequalities if uh, we look at uh, the problem with x of zero equals a x of, x of t equals b then you will have this to ask these inequalities on the functions alpha and beta then um, the method applies also to uh, other types of differential equations, not only second order ordinary differential equations, but also to um, equations of this type, for example, where the, the function phi can be different, different types. So involving, for example, a P-Laplacian, scalar, scalar P-Laplacian operator or relativistic operator or mean, mean curvature operator. And also uh, you could deal with uh, partial differential equations like uh, for example, elliptic or parabolic. Uh, also other types like uh, the telegraph equation, for example. In, in my knowledge uh, for the wave equation, so without, without friction, I, I don't think there are results on this maybe maybe some of you know some results about upper and lower solutions in this case so uh, after these preliminaries I, I will start speaking about some uh, results I have obtained with some collaborators um, concerning uh, uh, systems of uh, of uh, differential equations so just to introduce the subject, uh, let us start from this uh, equation with the phi, phi Laplacian, say. This phi is a function which is um, a homeomorphism, an increasing homeomorphism from an interval to another interval. And uh, we can write this equation, it is well known, in this way. So, so you, we get a, a system, um, phi is invertible, so you can you can write it this way. Here G comes from H, of course. Then uh, if alpha is a lower solution in the sense I, I said before, uh, we could uh, define this new function, which I call Y alpha. Y alpha of T is phi of alpha prime of T. And then notice that uh, the inequality which defines the lower solution can be written in this way. So uh, the first condition is obvious from the definition of y alpha, and then comes the second one, which is the inequality we need for the lower solution. Now, with this example in mind, we will try, we will try now to generalize to a system of this type. Um, let us consider the t periodic case first, then I will speak also about the other types of problems. Well, with the same idea as before, given um, alpha, uh, I, 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 I will call alpha a lower solution if I can find a solution, uh, a function y alpha, so it, with these properties. The, this I wrote here, identify uniquely the function y alpha, but I need also a sign condition as you, as you see, and then uh, the inequality, the inequality we have seen uh, already. So in this case, I will call alpha a lower solution. Uh, as, you, as you see, alpha comes together with this other function, which is y alpha. And uh, the assumptions here generalize the, the ones we had for the um, scalar second order equation. So in the same way as a lower solution, we can define now an upper solution. It would be a function beta for which we can find uniquely uh, another function y beta with uh, analogous properties as before. This is the, some kind of sign condition and then the inequality, which is in the other sense, of course. And this will be called 
and upper solution. Now, I, I will tell you uh, the results we obtained uh, in uh, joint papers with uh, Rodicato Ader and uh, Giuliano Clun and Andrea Specci. So, assume that uh, we have a T periodic problem. As I said before, this means that the functions are periodic in T and uh, uh, that there exists uh, alpha and beta, a lower and an upper solution, which are well ordered. As I said before, this means that alpha is less or equal than beta. Then uh, we ask this condition. You remember also in the Knobloch uh, uh, theorem, we had uh, the Nagumo condition. This is something replacing the, the Nagumo condition. It can be viewed without you read it uh, extensively. You can see it in this picture in some sense. So this is the phase plane uh, um, setting. We have alpha and beta on the left and on the right vertical sides. And then there are these two curves, gamma minus and gamma plus, which are the bottom and the upper part of this, uh, say, rectangle. And the, the vector fields, the vector field has to go in this way. This is what means the, the condition I showed. Similar situations as, as these have, have been already considered in the literature by many, many, many authors. And so let's go back to the statement. This condition as you can see concerning the functions gamma minus and gamma plus, we have seen it on, on the picture. And uh, in, under these assumptions, so there exists a t-periodic solution. And uh, we have also a localization, which means that x will stay between alpha and beta, and uh, y will stay between gamma minus and gamma plus, the, the two curves I showed. So this is uh, our first theorem, which generalizes this classical one, like Knobloch and others. Just a few words about the proof, which is rather standard today. It, um, uh, the first step is to modify the, the functions outside uh, this rectangle I showed before. You can see it again here in a smaller version. So you modify the problem and uh, after the modification, you have to, we, we have found two possible approaches uh, to, to deal with the modified problem. The first one was by the Vazhevsky method, which provides us a solution which is bounded in the future. This solution will, will remain in the future in this rectangle, pseudo -rect rectangle I, I showed above. And then if you have a solution which remains in the rectangle in the future, then you can apply the Maceras theorem and you have the, the periodic solution and you, you know there is a t-periodic solution. Or in the second paper I mentioned, we use the Schauder theorem in a suitable functional setting. Okay. And the third step is of course to show that the t-periodic solution we have found for the modified problem is indeed a solution of the original problem. So it has to stay in the set, in the, in the right set, in, in this uh, rectangle. And so it, it, we, we prove that it stays there and then it is a solution of the original problem. So this is essentially the proof of, uh, of our result. Now, um, we can also deal with uh, sturm liouville problems not only t-periodic problems, but the sturm liouville problems, which include, of course, Dirichlet and the Neumann problem. And also with the problem of boundedness. As, as I said before, this is the problem of showing that there exists a solution which stays bounded for every time. And again, uh, you can have that alpha and beta um, may not be differentiable at some points. So, Concerning alpha, we could have some angles of B type, I call them like this to be, to be simple. And uh, for beta, you could have some uh, angles of 
lambda type set. The derivative from the left is smaller than the derivative from the right. And uh, at the same time, of course, at these points, y alpha and y beta, the two functions which are associated to alpha and beta in the definition, they could be not continuous at these points. So this is a uh, first remark. And, uh, and now let us see what happens when alpha and beta are not well ordered. As I said before, this is a dangerous situation because you could have non-existence of periodic solutions. And so to, to avoid this resonance situation, uh, usually uh, you have to assume that the nonlinearity stays below the second eigenvalue, say, in some, uh, <laughs> in some sense, which I don't specify precisely, but anyway, for example, for the T periodic uh, uh, problem, which I analyzed first, this is surely true if the function G is bounded, for example. In this case, you, you stay at resonance with the first eigenvalue, which is zero, but you avoid the resonance with the higher spectrum of the differential operator. And so we assume some uh, boundedness on F and on G, which are, as you can see, um, so for example, G, uh, bounded by M. Here I allow uh, uh, a, bit, a bit more, uh, I'm not so restrictive. And F could be bounded by a function of uh, Y, for example. Also, there is a 1 plus X if you want. And then uh, again, a uh, condition which reminds the Nagumo type condition, and you, which I don't ask you to read, but I will show you again a picture which is this one. And uh, here again, you can see how we assume, how we want the flow to be uh, defined. Um, in, the, in the previous theorem, we only had um, a curve gamma minus and a curve gamma plus, the, the bottom and the upper part of the rectangle. In this case, in the non-ordered case, we need a whole family of these functions, gamma minus, and a whole family of functions, gamma plus, which control the flow. Um, so gamma minus are all these curves from below, and the gamma plus are all the curves from above, and they go to infinity. And so, um, we assume the existence of a, a, lower and an upper, a lower and an upper solution, which are non well ordered in this case. Alpha is not less or equal than beta. And we find, nevertheless, the existence of a T periodic solution, which has some property which could be useful, say, to um, localize this solution. So, of course, uh, it will not stay in between because it's, this is not possible. You, we can say that there, are, there exists T1 and T2 such that X in T1 is lower than alpha and X in T2 is greater than beta. Also this uh, result generalizes a, um, a well-known result for the scalar second order differential equation. Again, the proof, but uh, uh, I will be very sketchy now. So again, we have to modify the problem. And uh, the idea is to create a lower solution, which I call alpha hat, and an upper solution, beta hat, which stay the, the first one to the left or uh, of alpha and beta, and the second one to the right of alpha and beta. So this is also rather standard, you have to modify the problem in order to create this extra couple of lower and upper solutions. Uh, this is a scheme of how we can do this, but, but I don't enter into details, of course. Anyway, you can see in the center this type of rectangle we had before, and, and you have to, ex, um, to create a, an extra, a big, a big one, which is uh, an exterior one. And so after you've created these two 
alpha hat and beta hat, these two lower and upper solutions, which are artificial, say, well, you can work with uh, the grid theory. And uh, I, I go very fast here. You can compute uh, the degree theory on each of these couples, alpha hat, beta hat, alpha hat, beta, and alpha, beta hat. And you can show that the degree is equal to one in each of these three cases. So by the excision property of the degree on the complementary set here, uh, you have the degree which is one minus one plus one, which is minus one. Okay. But this is different from zero. And so this means that you have a, a, a T periodic solution. There exists a T periodic solution of the modified problem. Now, the first step will be to verify that this periodic solution we found is indeed the solution of the original problem. So the proof is rather technical, but uh, it works in a rather standard way. Now, um, I have spoken now till now about uh, systems of uh, two first order equations, so planar systems. Now in this second part, uh, I will consider uh, systems of second order differential equations. Um, so that would be N equations and, uh, and so we, we have a system of uh, n second order equations. So this is different, of course. I have to define again what I mean by a lower solution and an upper solution. Uh, this system could be mm, linked with uh, different boundary value problems. For example, periodic problem or Dirichlet, Neumann, and uh, other types as well, mixed, I don't know. So uh, what is a lower solution in this case? Uh, lower solution with alpha, I always call alpha lower solution, is a, um, a n tuple of, uh, of functions, alpha one, alpha two, alpha n, and uh, an upper solution also will be beta, will be, will have, components beta one, beta two, beta n. And com component wisely, each, for each component, we ask the inequalities we have seen before. So for the lower solution, this second derivative will be greater or equal than G, corresponding, corresponding components, of course. And for the upper solution, it will be in the other direction. And this will be uh, asked for every j, of course, from one to n. So we have n equations and we have n components. So now uh, this is a result by Bebenes and Schmidt, um, which tells us that if we have a lower solution alpha and an upper solution beta, which are t periodic, okay? We are dealing now with a t periodic problem. And we ask that they are well ordered in the sense that component wise, each component alpha j has to be less and then or equal than the component beta j for every j. So, so in this case, there exists a t periodic solution. And as we uh, want, as we, as we imagine, this, this solution will stay in between alpha and beta component wise. So for each component, alpha j and beta j uh, will include the, the solution xj. Okay, this is a classical result by Bebben and Schmidt. And now uh, I will tell you what we have done. So we, we want to deal with a mixed case. What, what do you mean by this? I mean that uh, for some components, we will have well-ordered upper and lower solutions. And for other components, they will be non-well-ordered. And uh, so I, I will uh, split the, um, the indices from one to n in two groups, j and k. j will be the group of well-ordered and k will be the one of non-well-ordered. 
and so on. The, uh, the system is always the same, n equations, and the alpha and beta uh, will be a lower and an upper solution as usual. Now we ask that for the indices in the uh, set J, we have a well-ordered situation. For the indices in the, say, in the set K, we, we have non well ordered. So it's a kind of mixed situation. Now, um, you remember that we have to uh, avoid resonance when uh, we have non well ordered upper and lower solutions. And this is why we ask that the function GK, the components in the K group, be bounded so that we avoid resonance with the second eigenvalue. Okay. So, in, uh, under these uh, assumptions, we also ask, uh, we, have, we need to ask that alpha, the components alpha k and beta k, so in the k group where they are not well ordered, that these uh, components be strict. Strict means roughly speaking that you have a strict inequality in uh, the definition of lower and upper solution. And then under these assumptions, we, we can conclude that there exists indeed a p-periodic solution. And for the components where, where we have well ordering, the solution will stay in between. Otherwise, where they are not well ordered, we have the, the location um, as, as we saw before. Uh, we have some information anyway on the localization of the solution. Okay, and uh, this result also is proved by degree theory, but I will not enter into details. Now, um, we have um, a extended this result in different uh, directions. First of all, we can deal with a very general uh, system um, where we have a differential operator of uh, elliptic type like this one, for example, and boundary conditions, which can be Dirichlet or Neumann or Robin, others. And uh, we can also deal with parabolic type uh, of uh, differential operators. Or also mixed, I mean, uh, in some components you could have elliptic and in other components you could have parabolic. So we can play a little bit with this. And we have an analogous result like the one I stated before. And also uh, for the ordinary differential equation, we have extended the result to infinite dimensional periodic systems. I mean, we work in L2, the Hilbert space L2, we have a system like this one, so an infinite sequence of uh, ordinary differential equation of the second order. And uh, uh, we have a lower and an upper solution. But uh, what do we need here? We need that uh, the lower solution and the upper solution be bounded uh, component wisely, you see, by the constant uh, dn. Uh, this constant uh, for the component, uh, the, for the nth component, uh, uh, forms a sequence, uh, the, the sequence of dn, which has to be in L2. Uh, we need, we ask this, this uh, condition in order to recover some compactness, because of course, going to higher, to infinite dimensional systems, we, we lose a lot of the compactness we we have usually in the finite dimensional system. The same thing for the boundedness of uh, the functions GK, the ones with, where we don't, we don't have the well order. Remember the K index means that we, we are in the non well ordered case. It, also here we need that the boundedness is with some sequence MK, which is in L2. So roughly speaking, th this permits us to work uh, in a Hilbert cube. Uh, and uh, this is where we recover the compactness. Since these two sequences, dn and mk, are in L2, this gives us uh, 
this possibility of uh, using the compactness of, uh, of the Hilbert cube. And uh, well, under these assumptions, we get, uh, um, we get the existence of a T-periodic solution, the same type of conclusion we had before. Let's see some examples. So as a first example, I propose a super linear system, but uh, uh, be careful, we, we want to avoid resonance with the higher part of the spectrum. So I will ask super linear in the good direction, say, not to have interaction with the, with the other eigenvalues. And this, for example, could be the case. So you see x to the cube, this means super linear. And then you have a function h, which uh, we want to be bounded in some sense. So this component wisely, we ask uh, this kind of bound. We are working in, for, in, a high, in, a, in an infinite dimensional system. So we are still in L2, the Hilbert space L2. If, if we ask this condition on the functions hj, so they have to be bounded by a constant divided by j cube, then uh, indeed we can find the existence of a t-periodic solution. Uh, as a second example, I will uh, look for uh, periodic solutions, so always periodic solutions of the, um, a system with an oscillating nonlinearity like this one. You see xj to the square times sine of xj. So this, this uh, has an oscillating nonlinearity and uh, always requiring some boundedness on the function hj like, the, like the, the boundedness we saw before, we can find in this case infinitely many periodic solutions because this oscillating behavior permits to construct an infinite sequence of lower and upper solutions. Then as a third, uh, and, and these two first examples uh, can be dealt with the upper and lower solutions which are well-ordered. Let us see one with non-well-ordered upper and lower solutions. This is a, a possible example. So you see the nonlinearity goes in the dangerous, uh, say, positive zone for positive x. Uh, it's xk divided by 1 plus k uh, modulus of xk. And so, um, of course, this is bounded, so we don't have big problems. And uh, on HK, we have to ask some kind of boundedness as well, like this one, for example. Well, under these assumptions, it is possible to find upper and lower solutions which are non well ordered, but uh, any, in any case, this gives us the existence of a T periodic solutions, solution. And um, finally, I want to propose you the infinite dimensional version, say, of a pendulum equation. Um, uh, this is a, a, an equation which Jean Wen loves very much, I know, <laughs> and me too. And uh, as you can see, however, this, uh, uh, there are these two sequences of constants, a n and uh, sigma n, uh, these parameters in the, in the equation. And uh, we need to ask that these two sequences are in L2. And this is a technical uh, hypothesis, of course, but uh, as I told you before, this permits to recover some compactness. And uh, asking also the function hn to be less than the coefficient a n, which, which appears there in the equation. So hn stays, say, is controlled by the other, by the other term, by the other nonlinear term, which is a n times the sine. Well, under this further assumption, we can find uh, also in this case, infinitely many uh, t-periodic solutions. Here I wrote also geometrically distinct because uh, um, there are cases when the function hn could be periodic as well, also not only in t, but also in the other variables. And, but uh, 
our solutions are not the translated, the translate of, uh, of uh, one single uh, solution by uh, a period. Uh, and so these are really geometrically distinct three periodic solutions. Uh, I mentioned this example because uh, in two previously uh, published papers, the one with uh, Oscar Jean and Garione and one with Mawen and Willem, we, we also studied this kind of problems, uh, periodic uh, uh, problems with periodic nonlinearities. And uh, um, by and, and, and uh, in the first one, the first paper, we had proved the existence of one periodic solution. In the second proof by, with, with Marwen and Willem, we, we could be able to prove the existence of two periodic solutions. While here, we, we are able to find infinitely many. Um, the method of proof in the other two papers, the one with Bosca Gin and Garione, was uh, by the use of the Poincaré-Birkhoff, theorem, a generalized version of Poincaré-Birkhoff. And uh, in the second paper with Mawai and Will, and we use some variational methods. Always, always in infinite dimensional spaces, Hilbert spaces. Now there are some open problems. Um, let me see the time. Okay. Um, let me just mention the possibility of uh, studying the existence of minimal and maximal solutions under the assumption of that there exist lower and upper solutions. This is something which has been done, of course, for the scalar equation. So this is something we have not studied. Also, um, how to find iterative methods to approach the, the solutions, the minimal and the maximal solutions, if they are there. Then uh, um, how to extend uh, our results um, to systems of systems, say, not just systems of second order uh, scalar uh, equations, but uh, systems of uh, planar systems like this one, or even infinite dimensional systems of this type. So infinitely many of these planar systems which are coupled together. These things we have not done. And also another interesting problem, uh, in my opinion, is how to extend uh, the results on uh, infinite dimensional systems to uh, equations of uh, partial differential, uh, with partial differential equations like uh, elliptic or parabolic type. We, here we don't have this type of result. So uh, just uh, to finish, I, I want to say that uh, I have uh, done a, a small research on MathSciNet just to, to understand. And so looking uh, on for upper and lower solution or solutions, exactly this string as I wrote, we can find 300 uh, papers with uh, this uh, string in the title, just in the title. If you write lower and upper solutions, then you can find 114 results. So this is apparently less popular than upper and lower solutions. Then there is also somebody calling them super and sub solutions. Not many. Sub and super solutions, there are more, 12. <laughs> so in the total, I have found 430 papers which have these words, these strings, as I wrote them, exactly, in the title. But if you like it to see the, uh, these things, uh, not only in the title, on MassSignet, you can do this and, uh, and see the numbers you have. So these, of course, can be or either in the title or in the reviews, for example. And you find uh, uh, several, really a big number of papers, 3,400 and more. Um, let me mention the, the papers I have written in collaboration with my colleagues, uh, uh, Rodica Toader, Giuliano Clun, Andrea Svecci. Um, as you can see, many are uh, very recent. 
some are still preprints. Well, uh, I thank you for your attention. Thank you, Alessandro, for your very nice talk. And uh, uh, you. if you have a question or remarks, they're welcome. So please. Yes, Professor Mawen, please. Uh, yes, thank you for your very nice, interesting lecture. Uh, you, you, you made a remark at the beginning about the, the hyperbolic equations uh, that uh, uh, did not seem to, to be uh, upper and lower solution methods. And this is, this is essentially true. And the reason is that, of course, the, the method of lower and upper solution for a given type of equation is closely related to the existence of a maximum principle for uh, such an equation, for this class of equation. And it is well known that there are exceptions, but uh, they are rather, rather a little strange or unusual. There is no maximum principle uh, for the uh, hyperbolic equation, like it is the case for the, for the other equation. And as you uh, kindly mentioned Knobloch, uh, one could add that in, in his paper on lower and upper solution, or periodic solution, the, the pendulum equation is one of the examples already. Yes, thank you. This was not a question, but <laughs> I can say that uh, indeed the, the maximum principle is um, the main tool to prove the existence in many of these results. Um, when, when you use the approach uh, in the planar uh, system, um, well, in this case, uh, for example, adopting the Vajevsky method or Masera's theorem, this maximum principle, is, if it is there, it is a bit hidden. So this is something uh, I didn't understand very well, if I must be sincere. Uh, I think that the maximum principle is essentially related to a, a second order condition for an extremum, you know, a condition on the first and the second derivative. When you deal with systems, very often it's just a first order condition for, for a maximum or a minimum which is which is involved mm -hmm. and in fact th this is already the case for the, the nagumo condition you can see the nagumo condition as a fur which has nothing to do with the classical maximum principle as a, 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 a something related to a first order condition for an extreme so this is where it can be hidden mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Professor Mawen, for this, uh, this remark. And also, of course, for your previous contribution during the lecture no? of, okay. of Alessandro. And now, uh, Luisa, please. Uh, good afternoon to all of you. Um, my question is about the notion of persistence. Uh, that, as far as I know, is important in the study of dynamical system, especially for application in uh, um, population dynamics, um, mathematical biology. Um, in the theory of persistence, uh, you are interested in particular uh, in uh, uh, locate uh, your dynamic in a half space or in a uh, um, bounded region. Do you think, and now my question, <laughs> do you think that uh, the existence of an upper an, or a lower solution or both of them uh, um, according to um, that you showed, uh, is able to also investigate not only uh, um, to 
show the existence of periodic and uh, um, solutions satisfying uh, suitable boundary value problems, but also to show, uh, to investigate uh, this uh, persistent property for your dynamics. Yes, uh, I will show you again uh, the, the set, uh, the picture uh, of, um, of our set uh, at the beginning. Well, in, indeed, uh, you remember this set maybe I showed here. Um, this uh, situation um, says that uh, um, the, the set of egress points from this set, uh, each egress point is an, a strict egress point. Uh, of course, this this is not the right picture I would have uh, to, draw, to draw because this is a section of uh, something three dimensional. You can imagine like a tube, a tube, and this is a section at a given time t. And uh, this uh, fact that the egress points are strict uh, permits to say, by the Wajewski method, that there exists a solution which remains in the interior of this set. So you say persistence, I don't know. I, I would say there exists a solution which is uh, bounded, but uh, you cannot say that all solutions will, will be bounded. This, this is not true anyway. And then, uh, yes, of course, uh, uh, when you have a bounded solution in the future, then you can also go in the past if you prefer and, uh, and try to, to link the two informations. Uh, um, so, I, uh, this is what I, I believe uh, uh, your question was about, but <laughs> I don't know if I have answered her correctly. Thank you. Very good. So thank you to Luisa and to Alessandra again. And uh, are there other questions or remarks? It seems not. So, in this case, thank you again, Alessandro. We really enjoyed you. your great lecture. And again, uh, thanks to also Professor Mawen also, also for his memory. And uh, I give the appointment uh, next, next Friday with uh, Professor uh, Pierpaolo Mari. And uh, it seems that it will be the, the last lecture the one uh, by Professor Omari, so don't miss, okay? 